Hello, my name is Paul Kutzinger with Amazon, and I'm here today to talk about Fire Stick and building a very basic uh, Unity app that will use the controller with the Fire TV and with Fire Stick. So let's jump in and get started. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is create a new project with Unity. And so I will call this Fire TV. And we're going to set the defaults for 2D. Just for the purposes of this example, you could, of course, do 3D as well. All right, great. So here we are with our brand new Unity file. And let's just get rolling on it. First thing I want to do is um, you'll notice that I have an orthographic camera with a size of five. That's fine, great. I'm going to add a directional light to this. So, directional light. I'm going to put it on the camera and I am just going to give it a rotation of zero and a distance from the camera of zero. So now we got a, a light right on the camera. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is create a game object. I'm going to create a cube to move around. So there we go. There's our cube. We're looking down on top of the cube. Um, and now finally, I'm going to create a script on this cube. So we go here, assets, create, C sharp script. I'm going to call it move. We open that guy up. Alrighty, so here we are in our script and we're going to start writing. I want to give you a little context first. Let's go look at the controller mappings just so you can, so you can see how this is all going to kind of play out. So there are two controllers to think about for both Fire Stick and Fire TV. The first is the remote and it is a um, five-way controller with a select button in the middle and then it has a back, home, and menu button. So for this we're going to do a few different things. The first is we're going to move. And so we'll use that D-pad. You can either use the fifth and sixth axis or the key codes for the arrows. We'll use the arrows in this example. Next, you need to be able to hook up the back and menu buttons with the key code for escape and menu, and then the select with the joystick button zero. We're also going to hook up the game controller and we'll use the X and Y axis plus the joystick button zero for A. So let's dive in and get our guy moving here. Alrighty, so the first thing we'll do, is we'll get a couple variables going for ourselves here. First we need a vector to express the direction. Great. And then we come down to, I'm going to change this to fixed update. And then let's start working on our direction here. Direction equals new vector2. And we're going to get input. Get the axis raw. And I'm going to get this from horizontal so that's the x component of this vector and then the y component will be input get access raw vertical And then I'm going to multiply that times time since the last frame. Great. Now let me explain where I got horizontal and vertical from. If we go back to Unity and we go into the Input Manager, so it's under Edit, Project Settings, Input, we can see here the list of axes. And there's one for horizontal, which is the left and right arrows and the AD button. Um, 
And then there's another one here, which is the joystick x-axis. So this is going to work great because for the game controller, we want to use the joystick x-axis. And for the TV remote, we want to map to the left and right keys. So this is going to support, support horizontal for both controllers. And then the vertical uses the up and down arrow keys and also has another for the joystick y-axis. Now you can add your own controls in here if you ever wanted to for more inputs. Uh, but these default ones will support basic movement. All right, so let's get back to our script. So now we have our direction. Now we just need to apply that direction to the cube. So that is to the transform. We're going to translate and we're going to go in the x, oops, in the x direction that way and in the y direction. Okay. Oh, and in the z direction we want to go zero. Great. And that gets us moving. So let's save that. And now what we need to do is attach that script to our object. So we'll go back to Unity. Here's my cube. And I'm going to add component, scripts, move. So now my move script is attached to this cube. And then when I go test it, I hit the arrow keys and I can see my character moving around. It's moving a little bit slowly for me, so I'm actually going to speed that up. Let's go do that. So here we're going to do another thing. I'll make this public. We're going to create a float here that is our walk speed. Speed. And we're going to equal this to three. So we'll go three times as fast. And then here I'm going to do walk speed times. Okay. Save that. Let's go try it again. Much better. Great. Great. And I made it public so that I can change it right here. If I want it to be six times faster, I can simply change it there. And now it's six times faster. All right. Great. So that does some basic movement. I'm going to um, add some UI here so that we can sort of get some debug text going. And I can see what's happening beyond just the movement. So we're going to do a little on GUI. And then we'll add a GUI label. So the first thing you do is you set a rectangle for the label. And in the X, I'll go screen width uh, divided by 2, so I'm going to go right in the middle. And then I'll do the same for the height. Screen dot uh, height. We'll divide that by 2. And then, I don't know, I'll make it great. And then the thing I want to print here is the direction. And i got to convert that to a string. Great. All right, so let's see what we've got now. Save that. Hit play. And now I can see that I'm getting certain coordinates into my movement. Fantastic. All right, let's go add some button support. So this was move. Now let's do let's do back. So the remote has a back button. And the way we deal with the back button is we say if during our update input dot get key escape. Then, so what I want to do now is um, set 
a boolean to detect whether we're hitting escape or not. So we go private bool is escape pressed equals false. And then here we go. It equals true when we're doing this. And then I want to do this again, except for when it's not pressed, I'm going to say false. And then up here, I'm going to do another GUI label. I'm going to say if is escape pressed, then we'll do a new GUI label. So I'm just going to show that you're pressing the escape key. All right, so I'm going to, instead of putting it directly in the center, I'm going to put it 50 pixels lower. And then I'm going to, well, actually, I don't need to do that. I can just, just put escape here. Great. And while we're at it, let's do the menu. So I'm going to copy all this because it's almost the same. So menu, menu. Oop, I want to do when our menu is pressed. And then here is menu pressed here. And then likewise, let's clean this up a little bit. I want to do the same kind of thing. So if the menu is being pressed, we will display that on the screen. Oh, and I guess I want to make this a little bit larger. OK, let's go check it out. Okay, I hit escape. There's the escape button. I'm pressing it. I'm not. I'm pressing it. I'm not. And we'll have to check the menu when I get to the controller because I'm not sure how to check a menu on a keyboard. So uh, let's just go on. So the next piece that I want to implement is the select button. Let's do that. And I'm going to do something a little fancier. In that last example, um, as long as the button was being pressed, then it would keep firing that it's being pressed, being pressed, being pressed. And um, what I want to do is actually have it do an action one time for um, each time you press it. So kind of like you would do on key down so that it won't keep continuously firing, um, but with, with, a, with an axis control instead. So let's go check the axis. For this, uh, I got to remember what we want to do here. We want to go back to the input manager, and I want joystick button zero. Why is it not doing? That? Oh, because I'm in the middle of play, maybe. Yeah. All right. So I want joystick button zero. I think it's fire one. Let's see here. There's the x-axis. No. Yeah, here we go. Joystick button zero. So um, we're going to use fire one. This is the button in the middle of the D-pad on the controller. And it's the A button on the uh, game controller. So see here, it's joystick button zero in the middle here. And it's the A button here. So let's go wire that up to do something kind of interesting. So back to this. So we go if input dot get raw get access raw and the access name is fire one and if that is equal to zero meaning it's not pressed so yeah so when it's not pressed 
let's come back to that. Let's do if it is pressed first. So get access. What? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Jeez. Sorry about that. All right. So if <laughs> I might edit that out. Now let's do the case where get access raw. We're going to do the case where the button is not pressed and where the button is pressed. So this is not equal to zero. That means, so this is not pressed. And this is pressed. Okay, so when we press the button, what I want to do is check to determine if the access has already been pressed once this frame. So I need some sort of way to check that. So I go if, here I need, a, I need another Boolean. Is access pressed? Okay. So now if When it is pressed, if it is not already pressed, then, right. So that means this is the first time detected a press. So now I'm going to do some things here. I'm going to, I basically want to change the color. I'm going to flip the color between green and uh, white. So we go if. I need to go create another variable. Let's call this one color toggle equals true, I guess. It's fine. All right. If color toggle, no, not that. Color toggle. All right, if it's true, then I'm going to turn it. Let's turn it green. So we do game object dot, what was it? Uh, renderer, yep. Material color equals color dot green. Happy. Great, and then I also want to flip the color toggle. Equal that to false, awesome. Now, in the other cases, I want to flip it back to white. So I'll do game object, here, I'll just copy this. And here we're gonna make it white and we're gonna flip it back to true. Great. So I come in here, if the button, this is the first time it's been pressed. So we go, yep, the button is currently pressed. So then it says, has it been pressed yet? And we say, no, go through here, set it to green if, it, if this is true and set it to, fault, to uh, white if it's false. And then what we need to do is we need to set it is access pressed um, equal to true. Great. That's basically saying, yep, now the button is pressed. Now, I want to keep it pressed until I let go of the button. And then I'll reset that ability to get back in. So I'm going to let go of it. When I let go of the button, we say it is not pressed. And then now next time I press it, it'll fall through this logic again. So there we go. That's how we get it to fire once every time you press it versus these where it fires continuously as long as you're pressing it. All right, well, let's go see if this worked. All righty. So the select button on a keyboard is control. There it is, green. 
Move it around. There it is. White. Press it again. Green. White. Awesome. Okay. So with that, the next step really is to uh, go get it set up and test it on the device. So let's. That's all we need to do for the script. We need to now go into Unity, and we're going to set up our build settings. Move it to our screen. Here we go. So Fire TV and Fire Stick are Android devices. So we'll click on Android. And then we're going to go into player settings and set the basic things we need to set. You, of course, should set your default icons and product names and all that good stuff. Um, but the piece you need to set is the bundle identifier. So put in your URL. So this is Fire TV demo. Great. And then set your API level. It's a API level 17, 4.2 jelly bean, level 17. Great. And then, um, oh, here's a key thing. You've got to add current. So I don't currently have the scene. Yes, I do want to save the scene. That is, I don't know what we'll call this. We'll call it main. And then you add it to your build. So that way that the scene main will be added to your build. All right. Now, we can build now, but we need to, um, I want to do a build and run and test it on the device. So the very next thing we need to do is go connect to the Fire TV with ADB. So I will flip over to that device. Okay, so here we are on the Fire TV screen. Um, and this is identical for a Fire TV or a Fire Stick. So let's go down and get this guy configured so that we can sideload applications to it. First thing we'll do is we'll go to System, Developer Options, and we're going to turn that on, ADB Debugging, ADB Debugging. We turn that on. That allows us to connect to it. Uh, what else do we need to do? Okay, we need to check out the network. So we're going to be here at the IP address of 192.168.1.17, and that's how we'll connect to it. Uh, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the other controller hooked up. So Bluetooth controller, add a Bluetooth controller. And I hit the home button for a few seconds on the controller. And you'll see these lights that will flash back and forth. And it is now searching. Found it. Pairing it. And then, yep, I can move around with the game controller. Okay, great. So we've got that all working. Now what we need to do is go back into Unity and get this app installed. All right, so now let's connect up to this device. So the first thing I'm going to do is jump into Terminal and we will do ADB connect 192.168.1.17 and we are connected. And so I like to do a little good old fashioned ADB devices just to make sure. Yep. Great. Now we flip back over to Unity and we are going to go to build settings and we've got everything set up. Yep, I've got the scene, Android, all good. Okay, so we're gonna hit build and run. Title this something. Fire TV APK. Go, baby. So there we go. It's compiling and building an APK and sideloading it onto the device for us. So while it's doing this, I'm going to flip us back over to the device, and you'll see it working there. It'll pop up automatically. Okay, we have switched to the Fire TV now, and I'm using the controller here, and I can go up and down and around. And when I click the button in the middle, it turns green as we'd expect. Now let's see here, I'm gonna hit the back button. Yep, escape shows up. I hit the menu button, menu shows up. Great. All right, and then likewise, let's look at the uh, controller. When I move the stick around, the X axis and the Y axis, that works as expected. Back button, menu button, and then A, 
is the button to change its color. Well, thank you very much for watching. My name is Paul Kutzinger, and you can reach me on Twitter at Paul Kutzinger. I really appreciate it. I hope you had a good time watching this little demo on how to build an app for the Amazon Fire TV Stick and the Amazon Fire TV. Thank you. Bye.